This is Harsh Rules, I am Ben Harsh, and today we're going to learn to play Age of War. Age of War was designed by Reiner Kinesia, and basically it's a re-implementation of Risk Express. Kinesia has re-themed the game to medieval Japan during the Sengoku period. The Sengoku period takes place primarily during the 16th century. During this period, numerous clans fought wars against each other in an attempt to conquer Japan and unify the country under one ruler. Age of War is a dice game that simulates this period and allows you to attempt to take over Japan in about 20 minutes. When Kinesia and Fantasy Flight re-implemented this game, they did a really good job. The original Risk Express version was done with a Napoleonic theme. The mechanics between the two games are the same, but I have to say that this version, the Age of War version, thematically is far superior to the Risk Express version. I've visited Japan several times and I'm a big fan of the castles there, so perhaps I'm a little bit biased. For Japanese history buffs, every one of these clans really existed and each one of these castles depicted on the cards either still exists in Japan in some fashion or existed at one time, so it's pretty authentic for what it is. Here is a quick map that shows you where each of these clans were located in Japan during the Sengoku period. Although historically there were a lot more clans than this, Age of War focuses on the following six clans. The Tokugawa clan, the Oda clan, Chosukabe clan, Shimazu clan, the Mori clan, and the Uesugi clan. These are the clans you must conquer to seize control of Japan. <coughs> okay, setup time. Step one, place the castle cards on the table. I've arranged the castle cards here from lowest to highest, but you can really use any configuration you like as long as everyone can see the cards. Step two, each player will roll the seven dice and the players will be ranked by the number of daimyos they roll. This establishes your order of play. The first player will decide which castle they want to try to invade first. Player 1 decides to invade Kumamoto Castle of the Shimazu Clan. Now let's show you what that looks like. Kumamoto Castle is worth 3 card points, and to capture the castle you need to conquer 4 battle lines. To begin the assault you're going to roll 7 dice and see what the results are. So we roll the dice and we get a number of different katana symbols and two daimyo symbols. To complete a battle line, you need to match the symbols to the card, but you can only complete one battle line per roll, so we have a choice here. We could complete battle line number one with the two daimyo symbols, but we do have a lot of katana symbols that we've rolled, so it might be prudent to complete battle line number four. The strategy behind winning these dice games is to ensure that you're being as economical as possible with your dice rolls. So here we're going to just use two dice to fill battle line number four since it has one katana on dice seven and three katana on dice six. So we're going to place those dice on the card like so. That means we only have five more dice to complete the other battle lines. So now we're going to pick up the dice and roll to see what's the next battle line that we can complete. We roll the dice and we get two daimyo, an archer, a cavalry, and three katana symbols. Obviously here we're going to complete the battle line number one with the two daimyo, so we put those in place and complete that battle line. Now we have three dice left to complete the remaining two battle lines, so we're going to roll the dice again. We roll the dice and we get three katana, a cavalry, and three katana. So now we're going to be able to complete battle line number three. Now we're down to two dice to complete one battle line, so you can see how this is going to become tricky. We roll the dice and we get two katana and one katana symbol. And we're stuck. We can't use any of these, so to keep rolling we have to sacrifice one dice and we can roll one last time to see if we get the archer symbol. So here we're down to the last dice roll. This dice will decide whether or not we capture Kumamoto Castle or not and we roll the dice. And we get the archer symbol. So now we're able to complete the battle line number two and capture the castle. Now if I fail the dice roll, 
there'd probably be some profanity in Japanese and English. Um, my fellow players would probably have a good laugh at my expense, and I would lose the castle. I would have to take all my dice off the castle card, and I'd have to start over the next turn. Meanwhile, I'd have to pass the dice to the next player. But let's relive the fantasy where I actually made the roll and saved the day. So what happens next is I flip the card over because it becomes locked and no other player can now seize that castle because I own all the castles in that particular clan. The Shimazu clan is just a small clan and only have one castle so this is an easy one to take over but the larger clans have multiple castles. Other players can attempt to take the castle from me if I don't own all the castles of the clan. Larger clans with multiple castles have this additional symbol on it. It's kind of a filled in daimyo symbol and it's a special daimyo battle line. If another player owns this castle and you try to invade it, you also need to fill this line as well to seize the castle from the other player. This is where it gets kind of nasty. Players can either try to take unclaimed castles or steal castles away from each other. However, once every castle has been claimed by a player, the game ends. When the game ends and every castle has been claimed by somebody, then you're going to add up all the points and decide who the winner is. Remember, if you take over all the castles in a clan, you flip all the castles over and you get the total points listed on the back. So in this example, you can see I've highlighted the cards with the colors of the players that own them. And the winner who has the most cards in this situation is the black player with seven points. So congratulations to him and this about wraps up the game because it only takes 20 minutes to play. And that's Age of War by Fantasy Flight Games designed by Reiner Kinesia. And unlike many of the games I end up teaching in this program, this one is in print and readily available for about 10 bucks at your local game hobby store. So there you have it, a harsh rules program that doesn't require you to go to eBay afterwards to get the game. I hope you've enjoyed this program. I'm Ben Harsh for Harsh Rules, and I'll see you on the next episode.